Hello. Uh, here's the, the alternative approach to the approach that was just covered that had the telegraph process. So this is how you get to a diffusion equation from a shell balance. So if we have a mixture, you can have a solvent, which is what your material is um, dissolved in, and then your solute, which is the material you're interested in. So suppose you have your solvent is, is component one, and then you have component two. You know, the solvent has solvent-to-solvent -solvent interactions one-to-one, -one. then there's solvent-to-solute -solute interactions, that would be one-to-two, like interacting with two, and then solute-to-solute -solute interactions, which would be two-to-two. -two. Uh, in general, in biology, we're working with dilute um, solutions, so there are very few two-to-two uh, -two interactions. So you don't have to really worry about solute-solute -solute interactions for the majority of um, biological uh, processes. Um, so, like in every previous um, section uh, that we've looked at in this in entire course, energy mass, we have to deal with um, the overall balance equation for any conserved quantity. Accumulation equals n minus out plus generation minus consumption. And here, um, we're going to talk about uh, uh, what this is for for mass flow. Um, when you have random motion of particles. So consider a material um, that uh, has a, a, a cross-sectional view like this. This could be a fluid or a solid, and then it has uh, a cross-sectional area A, um, uh, like so, and then this goes from zero to some length L, and this is position X right here. And this is some position x plus delta x right here for a small um, interval away from their position x. And inside this, you have j at position x. That is a amount of material per unit area per unit time coming across that boundary. And then in here, you have uh, a number of molecules or moles um, of your material. And plus in here, you have a reaction that's taking place inside of this volume that has a length of delta x. And then you have the other side, a term that is for the, the flow material at x plus delta x. So the total number of moles in this little um, region, uh, total moles would be ni, which would be equal to the concentration of i, um, in this region times uh, the volume of that region, okay? So, um, of course, uh, volume, according to our diagram, would be the area of the cross-section times the delta x for the length interval. Um, so now we're going to do this accumulation balance equation on this overall system. And what we're interested in it is at the total number of moles at some time point in the future minus the number of moles at some previous time point. And this is going to depend on the time interval, the spatial interval, the, the, what the value is for J, the flux, um, the reaction rate that could be taking place in there, and the area. So like we do for many other problems, um, you set up a, a, sh a shell balance, okay? Um, so, the amount um, of material uh, at some future time point, compound I at some time plus delta T, is going to equal to what was there before. But let's, let's make this more granular. So this is equal to the concentration at some time T plus delta T times A times delta X. And this is going to be equal to what was there before, ci at the time interval, um, time t times a times delta x, plus all of the changes that take place um, in this, in this uh, material. So this would include the, um, the flow of material uh, coming across uh, that boundary at um, at position x, okay, times a times uh, delta t for the time interval over which that takes place, minus what leaves, which would be minus j 
um, sub i at position x plus delta x times the area times the time interval, okay, plus what's happening in the reaction uh, inside, which would be the reaction rate, pre-unit volume, uh, times the area, times delta x, so uh, uh, the, um, so the volume there for the reaction per unit volume, times the overall time interval for which it's taking place. So this is essentially the in, the out, and the gen consumption terms here. Um, so what do we do uh, for this? We're going to do two steps. One, divide by the time interval, and then, which is delta t, and then also uh, divide by the space interval space delta x. Uh, it actually, it makes sense to divide by a as well, just because of how the terms group together, so we're going to um, include that as well. So we're dividing by that small volume. Okay. So if we remove the concentration at the previous time point to the other side, you end up with ci at time interval uh, delta t in the future minus the value at your previous time point, um, all divided by uh, delta t. Okay, so just moving this over, dividing by a delta x. And this is going to be equal to minus ji at x plus delta x, okay, minus ji at x. Make this uh, out in front so it's more clear. All divided by delta x, the a cancels out, plus um, the reaction that's taking place there. So now we have a change in concentration instead of uh, total amount of material, and this is equal to the, the Beth flux terms and uh, the reaction terms. So what do you do? Of course, you listen to the Eagles, turn it on, it reminds you, take delta t goes to zero, take delta x goes to zero, and you take these things to the limit one more time to get your final partial differential equation for uh, for the um, uh, for a change in concentration uh, in the material, and of course it's a partial differential equation because this depends on both x and t. Now if you look at this equation, we have one equation with two uh, independent variables x and t, two dependent variables j and ci. So we're again going to need some sort of relationship uh, that, that um, brings j uh, in connection to our concentration. The variable, uh, uh, it, we're going to do this by analogy to Fourier's law for heat conduction, which is exactly the same th way that Fick's law developed for, um, for mass transport by diffusion. But that's going to be in a separate video.